So I wanted to voice over uh, this video. Sorry about that. When I was recording it, I had my mic uh, configured wrong. So uh, hopefully only on this first video will it be that. But here I'm showing how to bring in the head uh, or, and then you know, make sure that when you click the front view um, that it's facing front and all that. And the way to do that is with the body move uh, feature and then I make sure I scaled it correctly uh, with the scale feature, insert feature scale and insert feature body move copy. And you use, need to use the rotate uh, function in the body move copy. And here uh, I'm using uh, from the evaluate tab, the measure tool to check that it's about six and a half or six inches uh, around the temples. Uh, and then I wanna start modeling uh, around, uh, use this as a reference uh, uh, to model around. So I'm gonna start a sketch a 3D sketch and then uh, use my spline tool and then make sure that I'm picking uh, a point that's in the center uh, here because I'm going to come back and create a line on a plane uh, that runs down the length of the bridge of the nose and I'm trying to use as few a spline uh, points as possible so I'm rotating around you know, one there in the center one out here at the temple area and then uh, I could use, I could do this in two splines and sometimes that might be easier, but I'm trying to do this as simply as possible so that I can adjust the spline, uh, adjust it all as one spline uh, and then have it uh, work. So I'm, I'm finishing again in line with it. Uh, and now uh, you see it's fully defined because it's all um, coincident with vertices on the head. Um, and, and I want to be able to look at it in orthographic views to move. So in this case, I'm going to look top down on it, take a top view, and then I'm going to delete the constraints on the three vertices that are not in line uh, in the middle. And I can grab these, uh, this outer one and grab and make sure it's moved off of the head. And you can hold down control, the control key while you're moving things so that they won't want to snap to the vertices uh, there. And you'll move them. If, as long as you're looking, uh, as long as you're in that top-down view, you can move things in plane. And then I'm going to grab the handles uh, and kind of straighten those up so that uh, it arcs away from the head. And I'm, I'm going to move this uh, vertex out so that things kind of line up. And then I'm going to look around just to make sure that Everything's looking good. It still looks like it's interpenetrating, so I can fix some of that with uh, by moving the axes. I can also, or sorry, the vertices, uh, spline points rather. Uh, I can also then go back to my top view and here, yeah, make sure I pull things out. And then to get this top line to kind of line up with it. Um, here I'm going to yeah, move these out, move this out too. Again, holding down control to keep it from wanting to snap down. Yeah, and that all looks good. You can see that it's you know, it's very high, or that top loop is very high. These things would look like sunglasses, so I can uh, grab that handle and move things down a bit. Now they're starting starting to conform more like glasses or safety glasses might. Again, rotating around and making sure you go to orthographic views if you want to keep your spline handles in plane. And then, yeah, see now I'm dragging this down and I realize that, okay, I can create tangency. You know, I'm at a good spot where I can create tangency across that X axis. If you look uh, yeah, down you know, to the little axis thing where my cursor is now, you can see that, um, you know, I'm sure I want to constrain that handle to the x-axis. I can still pull it out, I can lengthen it, but I can't. You can see the little black arrows on the angle tools. And so that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do the same for this little spline handle down here at the bridge of the nose. Make sure it's aligned along x. And that'll give me good tangency across the mirror plane. And then just one more check to make sure everything is looking pretty good across those. I think it looks okay. Maybe a few minor tweaks.
Again, I'm using what uh, one, two, three, four, five, just five spline points to do this. And for a boundary surface or for a loft, I know I'm going to have to split this so I have kind of a, a top and a bottom uh, of it. I want to split it there at that, uh, that one spline point up near the temple. So I'm going to go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and Split Entities should really make that a button. I use that so much. And we'll split it there at that point. Make sure it maintains tangency there. You can see the little tangent uh, relation icon. And I want to loft, uh, that way I can loft from that top to the bottom and I'm going to add a spline um, on the right plane that connects uh, there at the bridge of the nose. So I'm going to exit that sketch. pick my right plane, start a sketch on it. I'm going to hide the uh, head so it just makes things a lot easier to work with. So that thing really slows the graphics down. Get my spline tool, just connect the two. Make sure I'm staying in that right side view. And then you could manually adjust these, you know, to kind of get them to line up, or um, at the bottom part of it, uh, I can set that spline handle to vertical over in the left. Um, sorry, I think I, for some reason, temporarily exited the sketch there. And then at the top, it really doesn't have anything to relate to. You could probably draw a, um, a construction line up if you wanted to make it vertical, but it looks like it's going into that top point pretty well. And so I can confirm that sketch. And now I just need to give myself some guidelines. And I want to go from that point where I broke uh, the other spline kind of to the mid or lower mid of the, um, the nose bridge spline. And now I'm going to look at this in an orthographic view kind of level it up a little bit. Just make sure that you're coincident at both points. And now I want to drag one kind of to the middle. So again, I'll bring up my spline tool and probably go down to that point and then making sure that there's one um, at, the, at the middle uh, guide spline. Yeah, I was about to go all the way up, and then I realized, oh, yeah, need one, need this to be coincident here. And coincident up at the top, and then I can hit escape. And then rotate around, you see it's all kind of tucked in, because that first spline was straight. Oh, so all I really need, to, since it's coincident at the middle, all I need to do is uh, drag that uh, mid-spline out. I'm having trouble picking it here, so you just rotate around slightly. And I realize, oh, yeah, it's at the back. And it kind of wanted to slide uh, in that view, so I just changed the handles. Again, making sure that one, uh, the handle on the right, was aligned to the x-axis. And then I moved around where I can drag this handle just to try to get everything to line up a little better. And you can look at it face on. It's a very simple geometry, and it's uh, what five splines. Try to be as as simple as you can with these things, and try to maintain tangency, uh, so that uh, it's easy to mirror and it's easy for um, anything. If you want to, when, when we go to loft around the edge. I think I'm just double checking. I'm editing that sketch to just to double check that I've got continuity in all the right places.
uh, sorry, not continuity, but uh, coincidence. So now I'm going to bring up uh, the Surfaces tab and Surface Loft. I tend to like Surface Loft. Uh, it's it's got uh, a lot more flexibility, and it doesn't want it doesn't tend to result in um, um, degenerate surfaces. And I think at one point I may show you a link um, uh, or show you how to find out about degenerate surfaces. Solidwise.com has a good. Um, uh, or SolidWise's um, YouTube page has a really good uh, thing on continuity. And here, you know, it's the classic uh, connector flip. And so I just close the selection manager, and then you can grab the um, handles to move those. And everything's looking pretty good. This thing actually would probably work uh, as is, but I want to give it that little bit of extra control by using the guide curves, especially there at the bridge of the nose. So right click on my uh, guide curves to bring up the selection manager. Make sure it's pinned so that I can keep using it. And make sure I'm in group setting as the multiple arrows there. And then I can pick uh, those two uh, vertical splines and add those. So that looks like a you know pretty good surface. I'm kind of rolling around it and zooming in on it to check. Make sure I don't see anything that looks wrinkly or creased. Yeah, there I bring up uh, the, uh, you just type in SolidWorks Servicing Avoiding Degenerate Services uh, in a YouTube search and you'll get SolidWise's um, video on that. And it's a really good video. Uh, but they do show a, um, um, a method that I don't, that you know, is, without 3D sketches, they're, they're using 2D sketches that they extrude, so um, your mind's a little different because they recommend fill surfaces versus lofted or boundary surfaces and uh, you need you need some surface, so you need to have some existing surfaces uh, to do that, so um, this I, f I find that this method tends to work a little bit better. But they do point out what degenerate surfaces are uh, and uh, some ways to avoid them and then how to deal with them. So now I'm going to pick that surface and do an offset surface and uh, set my distance down to one mil and you can decide whether you want to go uh, inside or out. In my case, uh, you know, I think it worked either way. Sometimes the offset surface just will not uh, uh, complete So everything is looking pretty good, and in the next uh, few videos, uh, I will show uh, how to loft edges uh, around or loft splines around the edges of that surface.